My name is Josiah Bawalda with Hybrid Audio Technologies and today we're going to be talking about the DSP PC Tool version 3.4. Now for the purpose of this video I am using the software that's on my laptop so we are not going to actually be connecting to the DSP itself. By this time if you are already got the unit connected inside the vehicle like powered up it'll go ahead and it'll automatically determine what unit you have inside the car, what DSP you have, uh, and you can see the whole list of DSPs here on the right side. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be connecting to a Helix DSP Pro. Uh, where it says start demo down here, it would say connect, not start demo. But for the purpose of learning the software, we're going to go ahead and we're going to press start demo. And the first thing that we're going to have pop up here is uh, your presets, basically. Now, since there's no presets loaded inside the software or inside the DSP at this moment, nothing's going to appear here except for internal one and internal two. So we always want to just go ahead and load into preset number one when it's our first time. So we're going to go ahead and press load here and pull up our main screen. Now here's our main screen. Uh, it's across the top. We see our high pass filters, low pass. Don't don't get overwhelmed with this this is we'll, we'll come back to this this is just our main screen the first thing that we're wanting to do to go ahead and set up the set up the system and get music playing in the car is go up here to IO this is your inputs and outputs it basically shows your inputs here on the left side of the screen your outputs here A through J on the right side because this is the DSP Pro we've got 10 channels of output and 8 channels of possible input even though there is eight channels of possible input, we do not need all eight channels. A lot of people don't understand this, so that's why I'm making this video. Eight channels of input allows you to sum channels, and if, if for some reason you needed to. For what we're doing and with the way most things are nowadays with head units giving you a, a front, a rear, and a subwoofer, you don't need to use all three of those uh, and run RCAs for each one. All you need is a front full range input, meaning that you only need a left and a right RCA. So and for for instance, we're going to be setting this up just like I'd be setting up my, my personal vehicle, my G35. It's got a three-way fully active front system with rear fill 15-inch subwoofers, uh, everything hybrid audio technologies, and I'm only using one 17-foot uh, Stinger 8000 RCA, a right and a left. So the first thing I'm wanting to do when I first get to this screen is I want to right click on all these boxes. And what this does is this basically just gives us a blank page and lets us start from fresh. So now that the inputs are gone, we're going to go ahead and we're going to go over here under analog because we are using RCAs, which is an analog input. And I'm going to use A and B, front left full, front right full. So we go ahead and we drag, we drop, left and right all the way down. And the reason we only use left and right is because, like I said, we're only using channels A and B, a front left full range and a front right full range off the back of the head unit. Now, like I said, this is a, uh, a three-way front, fully active system, so I know that channels A and B of my output, which is here on the right side, needs to correspond with whether it's a left or right on the input side. So, if it says front left full here, the corresponding, if you follow this line all the way over, it needs to be front left something. Now for me, A and B is my highs, also my tweeters, so we're gonna go ahead and go ahead and click remember my choice, because that'll pop up every time. Click yes. Uh, front left full is going to correspond with my front left high. For B is going to be my front right high. For C and D is my L3 SEs, my mid range. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in here my front left mid, my front right mid. And notice how everything is still corresponding. My front right full is going to my front right mid. E and F is going to be my mid base, or on the software itself is going to be front left low, front right low. And for G and H, it's going to be my dual 15s in the back for the rear fill. So we're going to go sub 1 and sub 2. And I and J on, on my car are not assigned, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to click not assigned. Now the reason we're labeling everything like this is just to keep everything straight. We don't want to have our tweeters mixed up with our mids. We want to make sure that everything is going to be have, going to have the proper crossovers on it, and we're not going to blow any speakers. Uh, so one thing that we do different here on the subwoofers is we're going to go ahead and we're going to come back over here to analog and we're going to drag down a front left and a front right and we're going to go 
the reason I do that is because the subwoofers do not pertain to one side or the other. They, they are not a left or a right, they are rear fill. So I want them to have all the information possible coming from the left side and the right side so they have the most potential and they're, they're doing their job properly. So we go 50-50 on here for the subwoofers. That way we don't have any problems in uh, when we do equalization on the main page. You'll understand that uh, the reason this is done is so that everything is equal across for the subwoofers. So we're done here. Everything is assigned front left full to a front left high, front left full to a front left mid. So this is what it's, our corresponding outputs will be here. So your RCAs for your, for your tweeter should be in A and B, RCAs for your mid range should be in C and D, and so on all the way down. So we're done here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to go up to main, and now we're ready to set crossovers. Now the first thing I want to do or want to point out here is outputs A through J are the exact names that we just did on the inputs and the outputs. So we'll cross the toppers all of our outputs. So if you were to click front left mid, that's showing our mids and front left low and etc. So first thing I want to do when I get to this page is go to front left high and I want to take this little box up here in the corner and I want to check it. The reason I'm checking that is because I want to be able to set the crossovers a lot quicker. It allows it to uh, allows the process to go faster so we can get music playing and it links these two outputs because our crossovers for the tweeters are going to be exactly the same. Now we'll come back later and we'll uncheck these for when we do the 30 band equalization across the bottom but for now we're going to leave these linked together and we're going to go ahead and set our crossovers. So for my characteristic, this is our high pass filter here, I'm running link widths at negative 24 dB octave and my tweeters are playing at 8032 hertz. Now for my low pass filter selection, I go ahead and I click bypass. The reason I want to do that is because I don't want it to stop. I want it to go beyond 20,000 hertz. I want it to go to 22 and a half, 25, 30, wherever, it'll, wherever those tweeters will play to, and then they will uh, they'll fade off naturally. For, so for now, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and we run those at 8,032 hertz. Link widths negative 24 dB. I do negative 24 dB because if it was negative 12 dB or anything less than that, it's gonna roll off more naturally. I may as well have a passive crossover in the car. Because I'm running a DSP and I have more control over my speakers, I want them to drop off quicker. I'm running negative 24 dB, which is an all-around good slope to have when you're doing a customer's vehicle or, or any vehicle for that matter. Uh, sometimes in the competition world, we'll go negative 36 dB just to have them fall off even quicker. But for everyday use, negative 24 is a great slope. So we're going to go ahead and we'll move on here to the mid-range, which is, like I said before, the L3 SEs. Go ahead and link these together like we did before. Set the characteristic to link widths, negative 24 dB. And my three inch are playing to 249 hertz. And my low pass, I'll set this to link widths, negative 24 dB. And they are gonna meet the bottom of those tweeters at 8032 hertz. Now you can use the arrow keys, it makes things a little bit easier. Uh, instead of sliding it back and forth with your mouse. Uh, so I usually just click on it once with the mouse and then I slide them back and forth with the arrow keys. Uh, but it's, it's all up to you and how you want to, uh, to maneuver the, the frequencies. So next uh, we're going to go with the front left low, which is our mid bass, which is L8SE for me. We're going to go to characteristic here on the high pass, put it at link widths, negative 24 dB, and they're playing down to 40 hertz in my car. <laughs> Next, we're going to do the low pass. Link width is negative 24 dB to 249 hertz. And last, we're going to move on to the subwoofers, link those together like we did the rest. We are going to bypass the high pass filter selection. It says it's going to be deactivated. Go ahead and click yes. We're going to come here to characteristic on the low pass. We're going to set it to link widths, negative 24 dB. And my dual 15s are playing at 55 hertz. And now uh, our crossovers are set. Now, just on a side note, I set these crossovers to hybrid audio technology speakers. These are uh, beyond what some of the recommended crossovers are uh, because I know these speakers, I use them every day. I would suggest going on the website of the manufacturer of whatever speakers you use because there are many different manufacturers out there. Figure out what the recommended crossover points are because you do not want to go blowing tweeters or, or mids or anything. Usually with your 
uh, mid bass and your subs, you're a little bit better off because they're a little bit harder to blow. But you still want to figure out what your recommended crossovers are and go ahead and set those in here. The reason I was able to do this a little bit quicker is because this is, like I said, my setting it up like my personal car, and I know what my tune is and what these crossovers need to be set at for the speakers that I'm using. So last thing I want to do here is I'm going to go back over here to highs, and like I said before, we're going to uncheck and unlink these from each other because when we start going in with the RTA, we don't want to sit here and have the left and the right equalization be exactly the same. We're actually wanting these, uh, if, if for some reason you're focusing it to one seat using the RTA, we're going to want our left and our right to be separate from each other. So we, so that is the purpose of having a fully active system. The left tweeter is different than the right tweeter. Left mid-range is different than the right mid-range. Uh, same with all the rest of the speakers. So we went ahead and unchecked these and the subwoofers here, we're going to leave checked. And the reason we're going to leave those uh, together is because, like I said before, they don't pertain to a left side or a right side. They're our rear fill, they're there to just bring up the bottom end. So we want those to be exactly the same whether on our right side or on the left side. So at this point, we're pretty much done. You should be able to turn the volume knob up and be playing music. If you look over here on the graph on the right side, you'll see A through J lit up in different colors. Now I know that every other one being A, C, E, and G are all my left side of my car. So if I go here and I go ahead and I start clicking these red boxes, it'll actually show the crossovers that we just set. Uh, this is good to view just every once in a while just to be like, okay, what exactly did we do here? So you can visualize exactly what the crossovers are doing, where they're dropping off, what's, what speaker's doing the most work. And as you can see, my mid-range are doing a lot of work here in the middle. So that's just something to visualize every once in a while, especially when you get done setting and tuning all of your equalization. You can come back and you can just click these boxes and you can look to see exactly what everything is on the, both the left side and the right side. So go ahead and uncheck these. Now the last thing we're wanting to do, as we are playing, we should be playing music at this point, the last thing we're wanting to do is save and store. I save and store at least two or three times throughout the process. So uh, this is a good stopping point in the process. We've set the inputs and outputs. We've set our crossovers. So let's go ahead and we're going to click save and store up here. And just like when we started, we don't have any, any presets here under number one. So we want to make sure that preset number one is done first before preset number two. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to click save into preset number one. I'm going to go ahead and name this G35 test just for the sake of this video. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click save. And now you'll see the file name pop up here on the right side. So it's up here, it's in red. That means that that is the, uh, the file that we are working on at the moment on this, on this page. So if I were to go ahead and I'm on my, my front left high here, if I wanna go ahead and mess with my equalization, I've got the RTA in the car and I'm having to you know, go plus and minus here just to focus everything to let's say the driver's seat. We're going to go ahead and mess with that, and now that, that tune is done, it's finalized. So instead of saving another tune, I'm going to go here and save and store. I'm going to go ahead and save under preset number one again. I'm going to save it, and instead of saving an entire new file name, I'm going to find the original file that, I wanna, that I've modified and have, I've made better at this point. I want to double click on this, and it'll automatically say it, it exists, and then click OK and now you've taken this file and saved it and stored it inside the unit. Um, now let's say I want to take my mid and this is a completely different tune. I want this to be a street tune or a bass tune or you know just I want to I want to make the the mids a lot higher. So what I'll do is I come here and I'm gonna go save and store I'm going to go to preset number two because this is going to be, we'll say that uh, number one is maybe our SQ tune, preset number two is going to be more of our street bass tune. So we go ahead and we click on number two at this point, go ahead and click save. And a lot of the times what I'll do just so I don't get it mixed up is I'll go down here, click on the original name, and I'll add maybe under dash two for preset two. I'll go ahead and click save. And now G35 test under dash two is what we're working on. That's been modified. And if you were to click here to change the name, you'll actually see that you have both the G35 test and the test for preset number two loaded inside the software, inside the DSP. And that's the software that uh, if you were to pull it up on any computer running the 3.4 
software, you will see that that is what is stored inside the software or inside the, the DSP. So I hope this helped. Hopefully uh, this makes sense. If it doesn't, you can always call us here at Hybrid Audio Technologies for tech support at 770-888-8200. Or you can always email me personally, Josiah, at jbewalda, B-U-W-A-L-D-A, at hybrid-audio.com. Like I said, if you've got any questions, just go ahead and give us a shout. Hopefully this, this helped a lot. The, uh, the instructions are a little bit hard to understand for the, using it for the first time. So that's why we're gonna, I'm going to make a couple of these videos. But uh, thanks for tuning in and look out for more videos to come.